Hello everyone, today we use potatoes and eggs to make something delicious, I guess many people have never seen it, never eaten it either. First we prepare two potatoes and peel them, clean after peeling, first make some cuts on the bottom of the potatoes, then lay the potatoes flat and continue cutting, this way the potatoes will not slip when cutting them. First cut the potatoes into thick slices, try to cut it as thinly and evenly as possible, then change the knife and cut into thin strips. No need to cut too finely, just cut it evenly. This way the taste will be better. A friend who is not good at knife skills, you can also use a grater to grate it into silk. After everything is cut, put it into a larger bowl. Cut the potatoes into shreds without washing them with water. Just add three eggs. Because potatoes have high starch content, we need to use starch to shape. Then use chopsticks to break up the eggs. Stir evenly. After mixing evenly, add a pinch of salt, a spoonful of chicken essence, add a little more pepper to taste, then use chopsticks to mix thoroughly, let the potato shreds taste. After stirring evenly, set aside and marinate for 5 minutes, make potato shreds taste better. Next prepare a tomato, make a cross cut on the top, then blanch the tomatoes with boiling water, wait for peeling, blanch for about 2 minutes and remove the skin from the tomatoes. After peeling. Cut off the roots of the tomatoes, change the knife again, cut into thin thick slices, about 0.5 cm is enough, no need to cut off the bottom, then turn it around and cut into strips, no need to cut off the bottom, finally cut it into small pieces, after everything is cut, put it into a bowl and set aside, prepare a small piece of ginger, cut into thin slices first, then change the knife and cut into thin strips, finally cut into minced ginger, after cutting, Place in a bowl and set aside. Prepare a handful of washed green onions. Chopped green onion. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. Prepare a small piece of green pepper and cut it into shreds. Then cut into small pieces. Prepare a small piece of red pepper. Cut into strips first. Finally cut the red pepper into dices. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. Next prepare a small bowl. Add a spoonful of light soy sauce. A spoonful of oyster sauce a little bit of dark soy sauce to color it, a little sugar for freshness. Finally add half a bowl of water and mix well. Mix well and set aside for later use. Next heat the pot. Add a little cooking oil. When the oil is slightly hot, pour in the eggs and potato shreds. Use a shovel to tidy it up again. Fry slowly over low heat. Just make it evenly thin and thick. Fry the bottom until it is set. Shake the pot gently again. This will heat evenly. Not easy to burn the bottom of the pot. After frying until set, we use a plate to turn it over. Fry both sides until golden brown. Fry slowly over medium-low heat throughout the process. After frying, take it out and put it into a bowl and set aside. Next add a little cooking oil to the pot. After the oil is hot, add the onion and ginger and stir-fry until fragrant. After sautéing, add the diced tomatoes. Stir-fry evenly. Sauté the tomato juice. After frying the soup, then pour in the prepared sauce. Then the fire burned. Mix evenly with a spatula. After stirring evenly, then add the fried potato egg pancakes. Push it gently with a shovel a few times. Let the potato cakes soak into the soup. Then cover the lid. Turn down to low heat and simmer for 3 minutes. The time is up. Let's open it and take a look. Wow! It smells so good. Then add the diced green and red peppers. Then cover it and simmer for about 1 minute. Okay. Time's up. Wow! This potato shredded egg pancake really gets more delicious the more you cook it. At this time we can turn off the heat and cook. Remove from pan and place on plate. Delicious and ready to serve. Finally, sprinkle some chopped green onion for garnishing. A very delicious potato egg pancake is ready. Potatoes and eggs go together like this. Nutritious and delicious. And he also absorbed enough tomato juice. It's really delicious. If you also like, hurry and collect it and give it a try. Hello everyone, when many people prepare dumpling fillings at home, always dry, unappetizing, how to make it fresh and juicy, and the dishes are still not watery. Let's keep the secret of the dumpling restaurant secret today. Share with everyone, once you learn it, everyone will praise you as a great chef. First prepare a bowl of sauce, add a spoonful of salt, half a spoonful of chicken essence, half spoon MSG, add 2 tablespoons of dark soy sauce about 20 grams, 3 spoons of light soy sauce, about 30 grams, finally add 15 grams of oyster sauce to enhance the freshness and flavor, 
add half a spoonful of dumpling ingredients, add another pound of purified water, that is 500 grams, then mix them evenly with a spoon, let the seasoning dissolve. In this way, our ingredients and water are ready, set aside for later use. Next, we prepare 2 pounds of pork filling. You should choose pork that is 30% fat and 70% lean. This kind of pork will not taste greasy. You can choose pork belly or front leg meat. Then put the prepared sauce. Pour the meat filling into it twice. Pour half at a time. Then use your hands to mix it evenly. Let the pork filling completely absorb the water. Absorb the flavor of the water. If it is pure lean meat, can absorb more water. If you add fat here, you won't be able to absorb as much. How much water is absorbed? It has a lot to do with the fatness of the meat. After absorbing all the water like this, then pour in all the remaining ingredients and water. We used 2 pounds of pork today, added a pound of ingredients water, then continue to mix evenly with your hands. Stir this ingredient into the meat filling. Don't stir it first. First, mix it evenly like this. I saw that there was basically no ingredient water in this basin. At this time, be sure to stir in one direction. This process takes about 5 minutes. The more you stir, the thicker the dumpling filling becomes. Finally, it felt sticky and a bit sticky. This process takes about 5 minutes. The dumpling fillings prepared in this way will be fresh and juicy. In the end, the dumpling filling sticks to your hands and won't fall off. It means that it has been whipped vigorously. This way the dumpling filling will not become watery. Set aside for later use. Next we prepare some side dishes. Prepare about a pound of celery. 2 pounds minced meat. Just right with a pound of celery. First cut the celery into thin strips. Otherwise, the cut celery particles will be a bit big. This celery must be washed in advance. Then dry the water. Minimize water content in side dishes. It's not easy to get out of the water. Then cut the celery into small dices. After cutting, place into a larger bowl. Next prepare two green onions. Split the green onion with a knife. The green onions cut this way are thinner. After cutting, cut the green onions into chopped green onions. Cut it and put it together with the celery. Prepare a piece of peeled ginger. Cut it into thick slices first. Then change the knife and cut into shredded ginger. Finally cut into minced ginger. Cut it and put it together with the celery. Then add 2 ounces of sesame oil into it. Remember not to change other oil here. Do not add light soy sauce and edible salt. Otherwise, this celery will become watery very easily. Many people don't understand. After adding salt, half a basin of water came out after wrapping it. Add sesame oil to lock in the moisture of celery, and can increase the aroma and brightness of celery. Mix well and let it sit for 5 minutes. This way the sesame oil can fully penetrate into the celery. Lock in the moisture of celery. Not easy to get out of water. After 5 minutes, pour the celery, onion and ginger into the meat filling. Then continue to mix evenly with your hands. Be gentle when mixing. Don't use so much force. Prevent the celery from catching water. Just turn it gently with your hands. This is how we prepare the celery and pork stuffing. Fresh and juicy taste, and no water will come out when you pack it. After stirring evenly, our celery and pork stuffing is ready. This meat filling can be used to make dumplings. You can make buns or wontons. The dumpling fillings prepared in this way are guaranteed to be fresh and juicy, fragrant but not greasy. If you also like, hurry and collect it and give it a try. I will update different food videos every day. Follow me if you like my videos. Thank you for your support. Hello everyone. I will dig sweet potatoes from the ground in the future. Don't cook and eat it directly. Teach you a very delicious and simple method. It's easier to make than steamed buns. Even better than bread. First we prepare two sweet potatoes. Remove the skin with a peeler. Then change the knife and cut into thick slices. Cut it as thinly as possible. It's easier to get used to it. After everything is cut, put it on a plate. Put it in the steamer. Cover and steam over high heat for 15 minutes. It's time. Let's take it out. Put into a larger bowl. Then take out the rolling pin or spoon. Mash it into sweet potato puree. Like this without sweet potato particles. A very delicate state is enough. Leave it until it is warm but not hot to the touch. Add 5 grams of yeast powder. Then use chopsticks to mix thoroughly. Stir until yeast powder melts. After mixing well, add a bowl of flour into it. About 400 grams. Use chopsticks to stir in one direction. Stir into dough. If it is too dry, 
You can add an appropriate amount of water halfway through, just like this. Then add 15 grams of cooking oil, then start kneading it into dough. Knead into a smooth dough that does not stick to your hands. Just knead it like me, smooth dough with moderate hardness, then cover with plastic wrap. Leave to ferment in a warm place until three times in size. Next prepare a small bowl. Add two tablespoons of flour into the bowl, a spoonful of five spice powder, a pinch of salt, then pour the boiling hot oil on it. Use a spoon to quickly stir evenly. This way our puff pastry is ready, set aside for later use. 40 minutes passed. Now our dough has fermented. Tear it open with your hands and take a look. It's all big honeycombs inside. In this state, the dough has already fermented, then rub it again. Remove big air bubbles inside. Let's knead it as smooth as possible. Transfer it to the chopping board and knead it again. Knead for about 3 minutes. After kneading it, tidy it up again. Arrange into a circle, then flatten it with your hands. Sprinkle a little dry flour to prevent sticking. Take out the rolling pin again. Roll it into a large rectangular pancake. The thickness is about 0.5 centimeters, just like this. Then add the pastry we just prepared. Brush it evenly with a brush, then roll it up from one end. When rolling, press and roll at the same time. Try to roll it as tightly as possible. After rolling it up, knead it again. Make the dough firmer, then cut it in half from the middle. Divide it into two sections. Put directly into the steamer. Don't fire yet. Cover and let it ferment naturally for 10 minutes. Let the dough rise until it becomes significantly larger in size. If it doesn't shrink back when pressed with your hand, it means it's ready to wake up. Then close the lid. After the water boils, steam over high heat for 20 minutes. After the time is up, do not open it immediately. Turn off the heat and simmer for 5 minutes. Now 5 minutes are up. Let's open the lid. Wow! It smells so good. The color is also very beautiful, golden yellow, looks very appetizing, press it with your hand and see, very fluffy and soft, then take it out and chop it into small pieces, put it on a plate and you're ready to eat, just like this, a simple and delicious sweet potato thousand layer roll is ready, it looks very beautiful and appetizing, take a bite and it tastes better than bread, the layers can be uncovered and eaten, usually we can use it for breakfast, it goes very well with porridge or milk. Another point, when it's warm, put it in a plastic bag. It won't harden even when it's cold. It tastes softer and more delicious than bread. Even picky children love to eat. If you also like it, quickly collect it and try it. Hello everyone, I never expected that. Cut the potatoes into small cubes. Add flour to it, stir it with chopsticks. It turns into a delicious delicacy in no time. I guess many people have never seen this approach, never eaten it either. Let's see how it's done. First prepare a potato. Peel off the skin with a paring knife. It's best to choose potatoes with yellow hearts. This kind of potato tastes better. After peeling, wash the potatoes. Then change the knife and cut into thick slices. The thickness is about 0.5 centimeters. After cutting, change the knife and cut into long strips. This strip should be as thick as chopsticks. Finally cut it into small dices. After everything is cut, put it into a larger bowl. Then crack a serious egg into it. Stir evenly with chopsticks. Let each potato dice. Coat them evenly with a layer of egg wash. After mixing well, add 2 tablespoons of flour into it. Continue to mix evenly with chopsticks. I need to stir it up here a little longer. Let each potato dice. Evenly coated with a thin layer of flour, keep stirring until the potatoes are diced, not sticking together, just like this. After mixing, set aside for later use. Next prepare a tomato, make a cross cut on the top, then pour a little more boiling water, blanch the tomato skin. After blanching, peel off the outer skin. After peeling, cut into thick slices with a knife, then change the knife and cut it into long strips. What should be paid attention to here is not to cut off the bottom. Finally cut it into small dices. After everything is cut, put it into a bowl and set aside. Next, prepare a handful of soaked fungus. Cut into thin strips. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. Then prepare a handful of vegetables that you like to eat. Cut into small pieces. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. 
Prepare a handful of clean onions. Cut the green onions with a knife. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. Prepare a small bowl. Crack in a serious egg. Then use chopsticks to break up the eggs. Set aside for later use. Then heat the pan and add a little cooking oil. After the oil is hot, add the chopped green onions and stir fry until fragrant. After sauteing, add the diced tomatoes and stir fry. Stir fry the tomato juice. After the tomatoes have juiced out, add a spoonful of light soy sauce. Stir fry a few times. Stir fry evenly. Then add a little more boiling water into it. Next we start seasoning. Add a pinch of salt. A spoonful of chicken essence. A small spoonful of pepper. Then add the flour diced potatoes. Mix evenly with a spoon. Let it cook for about 5 minutes. Boil the potatoes until thoroughly cooked. Let's take a look. The pimples produced in this way are very even in size. It tastes soft and chewy. Very delicious. After the potatoes are cooked, add the fungus. Cook for another minute or so. After a minute, pour in the egg liquid again. Like me, add it slowly in a linear fashion. After the egg liquid is cooked until solid, add the green vegetables. Turn up the heat and cook until the vegetables are broken. Finally, pour in a spoonful of sesame oil. Stir evenly and turn off the heat. A very delicious and nutritious home-cooked potato pimple soup. It's done. This will make the pimples even in size. The method is also simple. When it's cold, have a bowl like this. Heartwarming and stomach warming. Even picky children love to eat. If you also like it, quickly collect it and try it. I will update different food videos every day. Follow me if you like my videos. Thank you for your support. Hello everyone. Today I will share with you a leek box. Very delicious recipe. Its biggest feature is that the outer skin is very burnt. But it does not affect its softness. It's really caramel and soft. The whole family loves to eat. The most important thing is that the method is very simple. Let's see how it's done. First prepare 300 grams of flour. Pour into a larger bowl. Add 3 grams of salt to it. Then stir with chopsticks. Stir evenly. Pour another 100 milliliters into it. Freshly boiled hot water at 90 degrees. Usually when we make leek boxes, we use semi-scalded noodles. Today we are using fully scalded noodles. Make it more delicious. The noodles are very soft because the flour is almost cooked. After stirring into dough, let's knead it into a smooth dough. After kneading, cover the lid and let it rest for 10 minutes. Now prepare four serious eggs and break them into a large bowl. Add a handful of dried shrimps for freshness and calcium supplementation. Add a pinch of salt to increase the flavor. Then use chopsticks to mix thoroughly. Beat the eggs thoroughly. After stirring, heat the oil in the pot in advance. Then pour in the egg liquid. Turn up the heat and stir fry the egg liquid into egg droplets. When we were making scrambled eggs, you can add a little more salt in turn. You can add less salt to the leeks after a while. This way the leeks won't come out of water easily. Just fry the frangipani like this. Set aside for later use. Then take out the dough and knead it again. After the dough wakes up, it becomes very easy to knead. After kneading it smooth, cover it and set it aside for later use. Then prepare 300 grams of cleaned leeks. Try to chop the leek head as finely as possible. Leek leaves can be cut slightly wider. After everything is cut, pour it into a larger bowl. If you want leeks to stay green and not turn yellow, add 1 gram of edible alkali to it. We usually eat more alkaline foods. There are also many benefits to the body. After stirring evenly, add a little more ground sesame oil. Add a spoonful of 13 incense to it. You don't have to add it if you don't like it. Then use chopsticks to mix thoroughly. After mixing well, add a little salt. Give the leeks a base flavor. Then add the chopped scrambled eggs too. Continue to stir evenly. After mixing evenly, set aside for later use. Then sprinkle a little dry flour on the board. There is no need to knead the risen dough. Just divide it into two parts. Divide it into two parts like this. Knead directly and shape into long strips. Divide it into two parts and knead it. It will be easier to knead than dough. Then divide it into evenly sized dough pieces. I have a total of 14 here. There is no need to knead the small dough. Just flatten it directly. Then roll it out with a rolling pin. Because we make leek boxes, the dough should be rolled out slightly larger. But don't roll it too thinly. The thickness is about 1 to 2 millimeters. Then take another spoonful of filling and put it in the middle. Then fold it in half like this. 
press the edges firmly with your fingers. Because the leak boxes we make are relatively large, put it on the chopping board for easier operation, then pinch the edges again, knead it a little tighter. This will prevent the burning process. The leak box cracked. Then lock the edges like me. The advantage of locking the edges like this is to prevent the leak box from cracking. It can also prevent leaks from getting watery. And the edge is not thick. And it is very beautiful. Just like this. After everything is done, set it aside for later use. Next, brush an electric baking pan or pan with a little cooking oil. Want the baked surface to be crispier? Just add a little more oil. If you want to eat lighter, add less oil. After the oil is hot, we put the leak boxes in one by one. Then brush a layer of cooking oil on the surface to lock in the moisture. The leak box baked in this way will not become hard. After brushing with oil, turn on high heat and sear. Do not put the lid on when baking. Slowly cook it like this with the pot open. Fry until golden brown on the bottom. After the bottom is golden, we turn it over. This process takes about 3 minutes. Then sear the other side until golden brown. Fry until the surface puffs up like this. It springs back immediately when pressed. Brown surface. You'll be familiar with it like this. Then take it out and put it on a plate. It's ready to eat. The leek box we made this way. Crispy and charred skin. And it tastes very soft. And the leeks inside are still green. No water comes out either. Full hot noodles. The made leek boxes are really delicious. And the method is also very simple. If you also like it, quickly collect it and try it. Hello everyone. Fried crispy pork. I believe many friends like to eat it. But there are many people who can't do it well. It's either soft or not crispy. Let me tell you the correct method today. The fried pork is crispy and crispy. And it won't soften when it cools down. First, let's prepare a piece of pork belly with plum blossoms. Plum blossom meat tastes relatively tender. If you like something fatter, you can also use pork belly. After cleaning the meat, cut it into small pieces. Then change the knife and cut into thin thick slices. The thickness is about 1 cm. After everything is cut, cut it into thick strips with a knife. Just about as thick as your thumb. After everything is cut, put it into a larger bowl. Add a small spoonful of salt to the bowl to add some flavor. A small spoonful of pepper. A spoonful of cooking wine to remove the fishy smell. A handful of peppercorns. Appropriate amount of green onions and shredded ginger. Then mix it evenly with your hands. Mix well and set aside to marinate for 20 minutes. Next we have to prepare for a very important step. Prepare a big bowl. Add 2 tablespoons of sweet potato starch. Add another tablespoon of cornstarch. You can also use potato starch. Add another spoonful of plain flour. Add a pinch of salt. Beat in 2 more serious egg yolks. Then use chopsticks to break up the egg yolks and stir evenly. The crispy meat fried with egg yolk will be softer. It's also more fragrant. If you add egg white, the fried pork may be a little tougher, and the taste is not that good. After stirring evenly, add the beer in small amounts. If you want the crispy pork to not become soft again after cooling, you can't add water here. Use beer instead of water. The crispy meat fried in this way is even crispier. It's crunchy even when it's cold. When adding beer, don't add too much at one time. Add small amounts and multiple times like this. Only then can we better control its consistency. Finally stir it into a thick yogurt-like consistency. Pick up the batter with chopsticks. As long as it can drip into a straight line. This kind of batter can coat the meat very well. Will not fall off. Finally add a spoonful of cooking oil into it. Continue to mix evenly with chopsticks. Let the oil and batter fully blend together. Add cooking oil. Crispy meat that can be fried. Fluffier and crispier. After mixing evenly, set aside for later use. By this time our meat has also been marinated. Take out the onions and ginger inside. Then slowly pour in the batter we prepared. Then use chopsticks to mix thoroughly. Let each strip of meat be evenly coated with a layer of batter. After mixing evenly, do not put it into the pan and fry it directly. Let it set aside to ferment for about half an hour. Crispy meat fried like this. It will be more fluffy and crispy. Then add a little more cooking oil to the pan. Turn on high heat and heat the oil to 60% hot. Just put down the chopsticks and make dense bubbles. At this time, turn to low heat or turn off the heat. Then slowly put the meat strips coated in flour into the pot. When adding to the pot, spread it out. Prevent sticking together. After putting everything in the pot, don't touch it yet. Let it fry for about 30 seconds until it takes shape. Then use a slotted spoon to gently stir. 
separate the strips of meat that are stuck together. Just keep frying on medium-low heat for about 6 to 7 minutes. Use a slotted spoon to stir during frying. Let it heat evenly. In this way, the fried crispy meat will have the same color. After 6 minutes, fry until all the crispy meat floats up, and the color is golden yellow. Then first control the oil and fish it out. Then increase the temperature of the oil in the pot a little more. Explode again. This way you can achieve a crispy outside and tender inside texture. Then prepare a slotted spoon. Salvage out the debris inside. This way our oil won't get dirty. It won't be fried. Increase the oil temperature to 70% heat. Then put the fried crispy meat into the pot. Re-explosion for about 15 seconds. In 15 seconds, our crispy pork will be fried. Look at the golden color. Looks very appetizing. Then use a slotted spoon to take it out and control the oil. The crispy meat fried in this way is really crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. It tastes more delicious the more you chew it. Can't stop eating so delicious. It tastes great whether with wine or as a snack. If you also like it, quickly collect it and try it. I will update different food videos every day. Follow me if you like my videos. Thank you for your support. Hello everyone. Many people are frying fish. It either sticks to the pan or breaks the skin. Today I will share with you a non-stick pan for frying fish. Tips for not breaking the skin. After learning, you no longer have to worry about fish sticking to the pan when frying. The skin is broken. This is a fish I bought for 10 yuan today. Let's clean it first. Black membrane and blood in fish belly. Be sure to clean it. It is the source of the fishy smell. After cleaning, put it on the chopping board and have a look. The fish belly at this time. It has been processed very cleanly. Then use kitchen paper to wipe away the moisture on the surface. While we were frying fish. If there is moisture on the surface, the oil will collapse. Oil will splash everywhere. It's easy to hurt yourself. So, we must wipe all the water from both sides of the fish. After drying the water, let's trim the fish's tail again. The fish tail cut like this is more beautiful. Very good looking. After pruning, we put flour knife on the fish. This will make the fish more delicious. Decorate both sides with flour knife. After it's done, just look like this. Then put the processed fish into a large bowl. Add two spoons of cooking wine to remove the fishy smell. Add a few slices of ginger. Add appropriate amount of green onion leaves. Then grab the onion and ginger leaves with your hands. Grab the onion and ginger juice. Then smear onion and ginger juice all over the fish. Onion and ginger juice can remove fishy smell and increase aroma. Be sure to baste both sides of the fish. The fish belly should also be smeared with onion and ginger juice. After everything is taken care of, sprinkle an appropriate amount of salt on the fish and in its belly. Then spread it evenly with your hands. Then put the onion and ginger into the belly of the fish. Next let's make a sauce. Add 3 spoons of light soy sauce to the bowl. A spoonful of cooking wine. 2 tablespoons balsamic vinegar. A spoonful of salt. Just the right amount of pepper. Stir evenly and set aside. Next we prepare a green onion. Cut into small pieces. Prepare another piece of ginger. Cut into thin slices. Prepare another handful of garlic. Cut into thin slices. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. Next, prepare a red pepper and remove the seeds. Then cut the red pepper into dices. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. Then put the marinated fish on the chopping board. Sprinkle a layer of dry flour on the surface. Then spread it evenly with your hands. This is also a little trick for frying fish in a non-stick pan. Then turn over. Spread a layer of dry flour on both sides. Thin layer. Just like this. Prepare another piece of ginger. Grease the fish frying pan. This is also a little trick for frying fish in a non-stick pan. Then fire again. Heat the pot. After the pan is hot, add appropriate amount of cooking oil. Just use a little more oil than usual for cooking. Heat the oil in the pot until it smokes. Let's turn off the fire first. At this time we put the fish in the pot again. Then fry on medium heat. When the fish was first put in, don't touch it yet. Fry the fish until it is set. We can shake the pot gently. The main thing is to allow the fish head and tail to be heated evenly. This way it won't stick to the pan. Fry for about 5 minutes. Then shake the pot again. The fish can swim freely in the pot. It means it has been fried. We'll slowly turn it over later. Don't touch it after turning it over. Also, fry it first until it is set. Continue frying for about 5 minutes. Shake the pot again. The fish can move freely inside. It means it has been fried. After frying, let's take out the fish first. 
Add a handful of Sichuan peppercorns to the remaining oil. Then add onions, ginger and garlic. Stir fry until fragrant. After stir fry, add a spoonful of soybean paste. Stir fry to bring out the aroma of the sauce. After frying, add a bowl of water. After the water boils, pour the fried fish in. Then pour in the prepared sauce. Then keep pouring the fish soup on the fish. The fish produced in this way will be more delicious. Cook for about 5 minutes. Then add the diced red pepper. Continue cooking for about 2 minutes. After 2 minutes, you can put the fish out first. Add another bowl of water starch. Cook until the soup becomes thick. Then pour it over the fish. Wow, it smells so good. The fish is really delicious like this. Looks very appetizing. The whole house is filled with the smell of fish. Finally add some coriander to garnish. Let's take a look. This fish is really tender and juicy. The whole fish is very tasty. The skin of the fish produced in this way is not broken at all. The fish skin is very fragrant. If you also like, hurry and collect it and give it a try. Hello everyone. Today I will share with you a bitter gourd. Very delicious recipe. First prepare two bitter melons. Cut the knife into small pieces of about 2 to 3 centimeters. Then use a knife or a long spoon. Dig out the seeds and pulp from the bitter melon. If you are a friend who is very afraid of hardship, you also need to scrape off the innermost layer of white flesh. This layer of white flesh is the most bitter part of the entire bitter melon. After scraping it clean, it won't taste so bitter, just like this. Then put it into a plate for later use. Next prepare a peeled carrot. Cut it into thick slices. Adding carrots gives a very crisp taste, and it's also very nutritious. After cutting, place into a larger plate, then tidy it up. Arrange neatly, just like this. Set aside for later use. Next prepare a piece of pork. Cut into thin slices first. Put the pork in the refrigerator to freeze. It will be easier. Then change the knife and cut into minced meat. Thickness of minced meat. You can adjust it according to yourself. After cutting, place into a larger bowl. Then add a pinch of salt. Add a small spoonful of sugar. A spoonful of light soy sauce. A spoonful of cooking wine to remove the fishy smell. A spoonful of oyster sauce. Just the right amount of pepper. Then put on gloves and mix the minced meat evenly. Catch until the minced meat is flavorful. It feels very sticky and has resistance. Just like this. Then add another egg. Adding eggs will make the minced meat taste smoother. It tastes more delicate. Stir evenly in one direction. After mixing evenly, add a small spoonful of starch. Then continue to stir evenly. Starch can make meat more tender. It can also lock in the moisture of the meat. It will taste better this way. Finally add a spoonful of cooking oil. Mix again. Adding oil can lock in the moisture of the minced meat. Make sure the moisture in the minced meat is not lost. After mixing evenly, set aside for later use. Then turn on the heat and boil a pot of water. After the water boils, add a pinch of salt to enhance the flavor. Add another tablespoon of cooking oil. Adding oil can prevent bitter melon from discoloring. Color emerald green. Then pour the bitter melon in. Blanch for one minute. Remove oxalic acid. After a minute, take it out of the water. Don't blanch for too long. Then put them one by one on top of the carrots. Then put the marinated minced meat into the bitter gourd. Friends who like meat can add more. A very full state like this is fine. Then put it directly into the steamer. Close the lid. After the water boils, steam over high heat for 10 minutes. Next, make a sauce. Add a spoonful of light soy sauce to the bowl. A spoonful of oyster sauce for freshness. A little salt. A spoonful of sugar for flavor. A small spoonful of starch. Finally, pour in water and stir evenly. Mix well and set aside for later use. Prepare some more millet peppers. Cut into millet pepper rings. If you don't like spicy food, you can substitute red bell peppers. After cutting, place in a bowl and set aside. Prepare a few more cloves of garlic. Cut into thin slices first. Then change the knife and cut into minced garlic. After cutting, put it together with the millet pepper and set aside. Then heat the pan and add oil. After the oil is hot, add the millet pepper and minced garlic and stir fry until fragrant. When cooking bitter gourd, add minced garlic. Can play the role of removing bitterness and increasing aroma. Saute until minced garlic turns slightly yellow. Then pour in the prepared sauce. Turn up the heat and cook the sauce until it becomes thick. Stir while cooking. It's fine if it's sticky like this. Then turn off the heat. At this time our bitter melon has also been steamed. Wow! Light fragrance. Very good smell. 
The color is also very beautiful. Then pour the cooked sauce on top of the bitter melon. Wow, it smells so good, fragrant. It looks very appetizing. A delicious and beautiful bitter melon stuffed with meat is ready. The bitter melon made this way is not bitter at all. Clear away heat, and the minced meat tastes very tender. Pair it with bitter melon. Very delicious. This is an appetizer. If you also like, hurry and collect it and give it a try. I will update different food videos every day. Follow me if you like my videos. Thank you for your support.